Hi everyone. Uh, going a little casual today, as you can see. Um, anyway, got a lot of TTMs, some hero cards, and that's it. So let me get to it, and we'll show you stuff. And I know I promised the video during last week, and I didn't get it done. So those who want to yell at me, go ahead. Uh, been going on stop here. 40 days this one took. It's another one of the historical ones. I historical loose terms. Our illustrious last present. And it is Mark Meadows. There's one of him on the phone and his official shot. And he answered my questions. Um, who was your inspiration for your career? Just concern for my country and the direction it was heading. Who was the best politician in your opinion? Anyone who was a statesman not wanting the job as an elected official. And I can agree with him there. Uh, let's take special memories. It was an honor to serve the people of North Carolina and this great country. All the best. Mark Meadows. So there you go. I must say, though, Trump's cabinet has been very good. I mean, I must say, I'm not quite up 50% yet, but I'm close. Uh, this one took 45 days to get back to me, which was a little slow because... Uh, it was a letter that says, Mr. Whitaker, I'm sorry I didn't attend the URC Georgia. This is, went to Bob Clemens. Uh, I didn't attend the University of Georgia to play football. I wish you all the best in finding the correct Bob Clemens. And Bob. So, I have to go look for that one. I don't know if that was my address or Star Tiger address. forgot to look when I looked up the dates. So, I'll have to look into that. Next, we have some hero cards. Sorry, I'm doing envelopes here. Uh, these are all the same. This is from Tech Slayer, I believe. Matt Snyder. I mean, I know that's sponsor, but I think I sent them a message. Uh, Facebook or Instagram. So, got those. I have to develop a system for those, huh? Next year. Next year I'll get on it. Uh, this one took, whoops, 40 days. Terry Anselmo. You may not know the name, but you'll recognize the character he voices. Donald Duck. So there's a very nice 8x10. I have this 8x10 Donald Duck. Uh, one line my animation project uh, but unfortunately not a lot of animators or those associated with Donald Duck signed through the mail uh, a lot have passed away or they live in other countries or um, just various reasons so I did find him he, he does sign next I have Susanna Blue Susanna does a voice actress many voice voices Let's see she was in Hunchback in Notre Dame or Dom depending on how you pronounce it I'm sure Kim Williams says Dom Foofer if you didn't hear, if you heard that that was not my stomach that was the dog he's on uh, she's underneath the table she was in Transformers She was in My Little Pony. And unfortunately, the post office did a number on this one. This was the 8x10 I sent her. And she signed up there. And I'm going to send it off to other ones. But I'm going to have to make sure it goes in an envelope that has cardboard all that do all edges of it. So that way it can stay in a nice, nice piece. Oh. 
Sorry. Uh, she answered my questions. What's your favorite production to work on? Actually, all of them. Who was your favorite character to do? Nanny. Looks like she says Nanny Smurf. And. RC? Uh, it looks like A-R-C-E or C-U. Don't know. Please share with us by special memories of your career. Uh, hardworking behind the mic and also directing the great people and working and worked with. And then she signed. Yeah, I believe. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, next one is hero cards this looks like it went to the sponsor and yeah, it looks like is i've got a sponsor before but he sent me different ones this time here's jeffrey Earhart, redneck revere you know what i might do is i might send it to uh i think that's big sorry i don't know what it is well i know what it is I've been getting four or four or five hours sleep the last three, four nights. Just because I've been so busy. Uh, Lining Castle. Been doing my normal job and staying up late, doing stuff. And Ryan Vargas. And then last uh, three mornings, my kids woke me up every morning. Full, I say kids, they're full grown. But they all have jobs, and they're teachers, so they get up early. They're Ryan Vargas. Uh, one has a long drive. The other two like to be early. And it's another Ryan Vargas. So what I've been doing is I've just been getting up when they get up and staying up. Uh, this is Colby Howard. Which I do like because I get a lot done. But I do have a have a yeah. Colby Howard again. Sorry, look, I saw at four of his signature. I thought, did he scratch out and start over? Alright, thank you. JD Motorsports. Uh next one, 37 days. I felt something. Um, this one. Let's see, this is what amazes me at the post office. That one, I sent a very thin piece of cardboard. Uh, Wait, widthwise. And the picture came back fine. But the other picture, it had a little thicker cardboard, almost a little thing, and didn't make it back so too well. Anyway, this guy is great. He is absolutely fantastic. This is the third or fourth time I've gotten him. I mean, I, I normally am not this greedy, but he has done so much for Hanna Barbera that I originally got him. I got three the first time, and he did them all. And he, he gave me a personal schedule. As a matter of fact. Uh, Here's who I'm talking about. Jerry Eisenberg. Uh, then he, uh, then I sent another one. And just so you know, uh, when I do send, like, mine to get group signed, or I send something else to get signed like I did this time, I always acknowledge that in the, the letter. I don't play dumb. I don't try trick people. I, I, simply say you signed before for me i thank you for that i appreciate it um but since i've you know either i put i found more or in this case i put i'm starting group project and or i'll show you a minute you know so i'm honest my my group ones i say you know obviously Here's a card, my base, my card ones, trading cards. I say, here's a card I've already got signed by Mr. Such Such. Could you please sign also? I like to have things complete. So that's what I do. 
All right, Jerry Eisenberg, he did Heathcliff. And he did a lot. Now, these aren't all his, but he signed up there. And he said his letter was, or note was, wow, this tribute drawing is one hell of a terrific group shot, Jerry. So, and I must admit, it is because it's the one of the reasons I copied it. You can see there's all the characters or a lot of the characters uh, and some that you don't remember. I mean, there's there's the Shmoo. Uh, there's, oh, I can't remember his name. I used to watch him. There's the Sword Fighting Turtle. I can't remember his name. Top, Kit, Top Hat and all his people. There is, oh, I can't remember them. Boy, my memory's good, isn't it? Uh, Hair Bears. Uh, oh, there's Mark. There is the Pebbles and Bam Bam Gang. Jabberjaw. There's Genie from uh, somewhere in here's I Dream of Genie. But that's uh, that was her part, her cousin, I think it was. And there's. Uh, Duke's Hazard, Catherine Rock, and of course, there's Daphne from Scooby-Doo, uh, Wilma, Yogi Bear, uh, shoot, Squidly Diddly, there's Top Cat, Great Gazoo, so, I mean, just everywhere you quick jump and crawl, everywhere you look, there's someone else that you, remind you of your childhood. So, anyway, thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, oh, this is the last one. And, oh, wow. 12 minutes. Uh, this one took 37 days. And Brian, best wishes. Dane Farewell. Now, you may not know Dane Farewell. You may not work his name. I like a lot of mine. But... He worked on his voice. Or not the voice, but the acting. He was Ghostface. And it says, Brian, your worst nightmare is about to begin. Ghostface, Dane Farrell. Farwell. So, there we go. And he's another one that I stumble upon. Like I said, I, I scan the list on Star Tiger. Those of you don't have don't have Star Tiger, um... Star Tiger puts out a list daily. It's updated daily. And it's what it is is if you look at the Star Tiger screen, it always is on the left side of your screen. And it lists all the new entries in the Star Tiger since yesterday, obviously. And it lists, first of all, it lists autographs that are scanned into it, it lists bad addresses. Um, it lists response history, um, and it also successes. And what's nice is it's in it's color coordinated, so successes always appear in green. It says success in green. So I always sit and I scroll down and I watch for the green, and when I get to the green, I stop and I look who it is, and I decide, well, is this someone I want? Someone I maybe want or what? And a lot of times, like Ghostface, Dane Farewell, I saw the name. I didn't know who it was, just like you did. Well, most of you did. I probably someone did. Um, but and then I'll open up the the person and look at the description and like what they did or why they're in there, and I'll decide. Well, oh well, I want his address. So then he'll say, I go. What I've been knowing a lot lately is I don't. The pictures are, excuse me, the pictures are so cheap. I mean, to get that size picture, uh, these two pictures cost me, I think, 30 cents a piece, maybe, maybe even less. Um, every once in a while, they have them on sale for like 19 cents a piece, 10 cents a piece. But it's worth it. You know, 20 cents, you know, I've got to find the picture, of course. I, I find a good one. I, I 
use Google Images and I search for the highest resolution. And I, I get, I always try to get three because to me, I mean, this is where I'm a little greedy. But if I'm going to send out a picture, I'm going to send out three of them at least. Well, not at least, but yeah. Um, I don't used to, I vehemently would not send one with a one stamp. To me, it was not worth it. Because you're talking, well, nowadays you're talking uh, 250 round trip by the time, and that's just normal envelope. You know, you get into eight by tens, and you're talking, you know, wow, well, a kind of short to post office, but um, you're talking basically two dollars, three dollars each way, uh, plus the the uh, envelope and the picture. The eight by tens are a little more more expensive. They're like a buck, buck twenty nine, something like that. But anyway, uh, so so I spent sixty cents on those pictures. To me, yes, that's worth it. Getting a picture signed versus an index card to me is is very good. Um, a picture you can get a picture of his character, like that case, ghost case. You know, you wouldn't know the profile picture I got signed. You wouldn't know who it was. And so when people are looking through my albums, they can, they'll instantly say, oh, wow, that's close to some screen. Yeah. It'll probably be right next to this profile picture, and they won't know who that is. And they'll realize it's the same person. So, anyway. Uh, I, I just hit, uh, I hit something interesting. I went by Goodwill. Um, those of you who have Goodwills by you, um, but uh, I went to a Goodwill, and I always look at the autographs. You know, I look for autographs. I should say I look for. I collect White Sox bobbleheads. I collect those. Which every time I see one at the one of the Goodwill shops or you know where the thrift shop, I pick it up. Um, my collection is growing pretty big. Well, not big, but I think I have twelve of them right now. By the way. White Sox division champions yesterday. <laughs> uh, boy, am I jumping around. If you stuck with me for this, more power to you. Anyway, uh, I just came from the Goodwill. They had a guitar behind the register. They would pull our, the high price stuff behind the register. And I saw this guitar up there. I said, let me see the price of the guitar. Because I saw there were signatures on it. I couldn't see who it was. And she said, oh, this is very nice. She, as she's taking it down, she says, uh, we have $75 on it. But it's it's signed by Frank Snatcher and Dean Martin. It's like, huh. And I looked at it, and one part was Dean Martin. There's Frank Sinatra and Joey Bishop. And another person I could, didn't recognize. Um, Sinatra looked like Roder Paul Rodriguez. So I'm like, this is odd. And I'm, first of all, I'm thinking, well, this is odd to get them to sign electric guitar. And the electric guitar looked kind of a newer model. You know, the back was brushed. You know, the design's about the same, but the back is brushed. So I looked, took a close look at Sinatra and Martin. Uh, Dean Martin, the M looked off. It had, it had big circles in the arm, like, you know, someone really put the M in and I seem to recall I have an autograph of Dean Martin I don't remember that big M's so I looked at Frank Sinatra Frank Sinatra is very pointy um, it's obviously cursive the S just didn't look right to me so I said no she goes oh you thinking about it I said no it doesn't look good to me it doesn't look right um, I don't want to say it's fake or it's forgery because, you know, I could be wrong. I'm not an expert, but I also, and I also didn't want to insult them. You know, I'm in there quite a bit. They're, they're in my neighborhood. So I don't want them to always be like, oh, that's the guy who thought they were fake. But anyway, I got to the car. Um, I looked up 
Frank Sinatra's autograph, and Dean Martin's autograph. Dean Martin, I was right on the M. He's never, he always signs closed M's. You know, what I mean is, those of you who collect autographs know, obviously you're watching this, you know. In M, what they had was he, like, it almost looked like a circle, you know. You, you come down and you come back up to complete, complete the M. He goes, he went wide and then came down, so it was like a, a little oval shape. I looked at my examples of Dean Martin or looked at eBay examples of Dean Martin. I try to look for just certified, obviously. I haven't looked at Sir Tiger. I should look at Sir Tiger. Um, but all the M's I saw were tight. There was no oval. And Sinatra, oh my God. Sinatra was way off. I looked at the F and the S and the, the What's on Guitar is nowhere close to any signature I saw for Sinatra. So, but unfortunately, you know as well as I do, someone will come in there and be like, oh my God, a Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin autograph guitar for only 75 bucks? Give it here. Here's my money. But I, I also, I look at books. Um, I get a lot of autograph, autograph books. And... The books, they usually just sell my books because they, they never take the time to look through each book to see if it's autographed. And I don't either, but um, but I do take a look at any famous names that look at, in the books, uh, any autobiographies that look in the books. And I got six, about 50 maybe, autographed ones. Um, I got a great, great collection of uh, Bruce Springsteen. You could tell it was a Bruce Springsteen collector. He had given up his collection. And, I mean, I assume he passed or something. This was a few years back. Because I found one. And it was a Clarence Clemens book. And I'm like, oh, Clarence Clemens signed it. Wow. He had just died like a year or two previous. And I'm like, cool, Clarence Clemens. I found another one. Clarence Clemens and the author both signed. I'm like, whoa, this is unusual. Then I looked a little further and I set up her Springsteen. I'm like, no way. No way. Pull it off the shelf, open it up. Bruce Springsteen. I'm like, <gasps> so, I mean, they took all this, I mean, no idea what they were, they were. But, you know, they can't take the time. I understand. But I do know, uh, this gentleman, I don't know if he watches the videos or not, but uh, Michael Pierce, uh, he's uh, very active on Facebook. Uh, he has several autograph groups. If you look through, he has one. Uh, it's retail or or no, charity shop. I forgot what the name of it is, but he searches for autograph books, and he he's got hundreds. Um, basically because he lives in New York City and they have a lot of book signings and a lot of those get donated uh, either by the people who bought them don't want them anymore or the book uh, the book seller or someone had them um, but they they all get donated and he gets a lot I mean he's got he's got a list of who he wants but uh, he, he finds Stephen King he finds Suzanne Summers, he finds Oh, you name it, he's found it. But it's pretty interesting. I've gotten some interesting ones. I got Ted Nugent, um, uh, Gerald Ford. I didn't know. I just take that back. Gerald Ford, I didn't find it. Bookshop. Uh, President Ford, I bought at his presidential library. They had a few left. Uh, that was my biggest one I've ever bought. No, I took that back. My P.T. Barnum is the biggest autograph I've ever bought. Uh, I bought P.T. Barnum whew, almost 20 years ago, back when I started collecting. Bought it at an auction. Uh, paid by time fees and shipping. I paid almost $800 for a Zograph. I haven't looked lately. I'm sure it's not worth a lot, but, uh, well, I mean, I know it's worth a lot, but may have gone down value. 
it's a letter, a handwritten letter from him to the editor of the New York World newspaper about the advertising that Barnum's American Museum was doing. So that that was all played part of it that drove out the price. Um, the second highest I paid for ever was Gerald Ford book. I bought it at his library, obviously, after he passed. And they had it at 150 I believe it was. But a few years back, um, when I was at a convention in Michigan, and I hate flying. Boy, you're getting... If you stuck around, well, you, you really deserve you a medal or something. Um, but anyway, I was trying back, so I decided, hey, Gerald Ford Museum's right close by. I'll stop. So I went, and I, I toured it, and... Uh, which I do a lot, well, I used to do a lot when I went to the conventions. I'd stop somewhere and tour, and, you know, if I saw a sign on the side of the road, I'm like, let's check it out. So, anyway, uh, got his book there, and also they had a book, uh, kind of Lisa Rice. She had stopped, the, he, uh, she was part of a speaking tour they did, so they had a few other political books. Um, from people who had spoke at their museum. So, anyway, got those. Uh, last but not least, I, interesting story. It's a funny story. So, when I went there, if you if you don't turn off the video, thank you. I appreciate it. If, you, if your friends like hearing rambling, have them subscribe. Uh, anyway, when I went there, I used to be deep into uh, what's called geocaching. Uh, some of you may know it, some may, may don't know it. I always describe it as an online treasure hunt. Geocaching is you look for a, what they call them caches, C-A-C-H-E-S. Um, and if you go geocaching.com, you'll find them. If you go YouTube, you search geocaching, you'll find a lot of videos of people looking for geocaches or really cool geocaches. But anyway, it's something I started with my daughters when they were small, and they've since grown out of it. I Every time I look at the, it's like 40, 50 bucks a year to be a member. Um, you can do it for free also. There's just some benefits of joining. There's more geocaches, and there's uh, you can look at them offline, which sometimes you need. But uh, so every year when I get the renewal, I, I look at them and go, mm, should, I, should I downgrade to the free or should I? I'll keep one more year. So I don't go as many as I used to. But anyway, they're, they're in every state, every country. Uh, I think every country, but. They're in every state, definitely, and most countries. But they're like little things that are hidden. Like usually it's a film case, a little film case, a pill bottle, or you might find back deep in the woods a ammo case or something bigger, a Tupperware container or whatever. And um, so anyway, there was a geocache at the Gerald Ford Museum. I'm like, oh, I'll have to look at this for, for this while I'm here. Now, granted, I had just left the convention. We had a meeting in the morning. In the afternoon, it was travel day to go back to your place. So I'm in dress pants, dress shirt. You know, I take off my tie and stuff, but dress shoes, real fancy. So I'm looking for this geocache. And what you do is you, you your phone guides you to it. Or you can get a GPS thing. I uh, forgot what they call them but handheld GPS, and it leads you to it. it. It is set at certain coordinates, and it tells you if you're getting closer, you get farther. And most places, it, it's a little difficult because a lot of them are hidden in woods or places, or, or there might be bodies of water around where you get to a point, you're like, oh, it's 50 feet that way. And there's water between here and there. So you gotta find a way around the water. Or there's a big tree, or there's there's overgrown bushes. You know, you look back and you look, oh my god. There's once you find it, you put it online, you found it, and 
you put a little comment if you want. A lot of people, like the back in the woods ones, they get ticks, unfortunately. You know, if I see one report tick, I might still look at it, depending on if it looks good enough, I'll try it. But if I see, like, 10 entries and 9 of them found ticks, ah, uh, that's too tough for me. And they're rated on easy to tough. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I, I, I apologize for this, but anyway, you want to hear the end of the story, I know. So I get to the museum. I go looking for the thing. I, I'm looking, and my phone's going dead. So I'm getting nervous because my phone is down to like 5%. I'm around this thing. You know, it's in a park right next to the museum. And my GPS says I'm practically on top of it. There's no trees. You know, it's like greenery and everything. And I'm looking around and looking under rocks. And, and you know, granted, people are called muggles who don't play. It says, you know, beware of muggles when you're looking for this. And so I'm trying to look casual. But it's pretty hard to look casual when you're in the middle of a park in the summer in dress clothes and you're holding your phone and you're looking for something. And I'm like, oh, man, I must look like a real weird guy. You know, everybody's running around, picnicking, and here I am dressed up looking. And I'm trying not to, you know, I, I casually look and I try to look under things and because everyone, they're, they're hidden everywhere. Some people hang theirs in trees, some people hang it down. Um, if you want more geocaching stories, stay tuned. I'm going to, I'm going to tell a couple more t and just so you witnesses. Um, anyway, so I'm about to give up because my phone's down 3%, it's about that. And I look up, and you see one of the security guards from the museum. And he's like, and I'm like, huh? And I point down, and he's, he shakes his head yes. And I'm like, I look down, there's a drain. And I'm like, and I point, or no, there, there was a rock. There was a rock there. And I'm like, and I point down, I'm touching the rock. And I'm like, huh? And he's shaking his head. He's smiling. He's, yeah, yeah. So I move the rock, and sure enough, there it is, in that little Tupperware container. So I take out the log, because there's a paper log for each one, too. You sign my initials, and put the date, and put it back. And I go online, do the entry online real quick before my phone dies. And so I get down, and I walk over to him, and I said, Hey, thanks for pointing it out to me. He says, Ah, don't worry about it. He says, You should see all the people looking at it, looking for it, because... He says, I knew it's what you're looking for. And I'm like, laughed. And I'm like, I ah, must look, I must look pretty funny. Um, so, geocaching stories. Tune out if you don't want these. I mean, seriously. I, I wouldn't know any different. Two stories for you. One, there's one in my neighborhood. And it's become legendary for what it, someone found it one time. And they went and signed it and, you know, did the spiel. Well, since then, it's become legendary for what's written after it. So it is what's called a parking lot catch. And you go in and there's the big light pole um, in the parking lot. Well, those have a little metal thing in the bottom. And you lift it up. It's not secure. So you can slide it up. And then underneath is the bottle, the pill bottle or whatever. So this one's a pill bottle. So, you know, I lift it up. The, what it is, is what happened is, it's in a parking lot of a strip mall. In the strip mall is a laundromat. Someone went, found it one day, signed, did their spiel, put it back. Then someone laundromat walked outside to see what they, were, they did. They lifted it up, found it. And they wrote across lengthwise because this little, this little piece of paper was that big, you know, about that wide. And they roll up. And they, they you can buy them. You, you can make your own, but you can buy the pre-made ones. So they, they stretched out and they wrote lengthwise across almost the whole thing. It says, you look pretty stupid out there signing a piece of paper. What the heck is this? So that one's become legendary. It's 
its name's been changed. They're all named. And it's been changed to, like, what the heck is this? Another one. I was at a convention in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And we had some off time, and I went and got lunch. And I'm like, okay, let's see if there's any geocaches in the area. So I pull out my phone, and there's one in the parking lot of the, I think it was a Kmart. So I'm like, cool. I'll go by. So it's a parking lot one. So those are really easy. I mean, those are a piece of cake to get. Because by the time you narrow it down to within like 10, 15 feet, there's nothing around but a light pole. Even if it doesn't say light pole. So sure enough, it was a light pole catch. I go and I pull. And look, there's a parking spot right in front of it. So I look around. Nobody's looking. So I lift up the thing and take up my pill bottle and what I do is I take it back to my car to sign it because I don't want people to see you know me doing it so I, I sign it put it back in this little pill bottle I get on my car walk over with it and I hear excuse me sir I'm like what and I look and there's a squad car there and he's like can I see what you got there I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah, I walk over to him. I give it to him. And he, he's like, and what is it? I'm like, well, I'm geocaching. And I don't know if you've heard of it. And he, he hadn't. So I explained the whole thing to him. And he chuckles. By this time he's opened it. He's looked at it. And he saw his paper. He's, he laughs. He goes, well, he goes, I hate to say it, but, you know, this whole area, there's a lot of drug dealing goes on. So I thought it was a drop. Someone dropped drugs for you to pick up. I'm like, no, no, it's just this. But every once in a while, you do get police that stop you and say, what are you doing? And usually, most police are, oh, I'm a, 99% of the police are really cool with it. Um, some of the police actually know, like, the security guard. You know, they know what it is. They are like, you just say, oh, I'm geocaching. And they're like, oh, okay, that's what we thought. You know, we know there's one here. But there is some interesting ones. I've done it. Uh, like I said, with my daughter, I've gotten ones in Niagara Falls, Tennessee. Um, and they're so close sometimes. They're, we stopped for a Cracker Barrel lunch. I looked on the, the 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 thing, the app, and there's one in the parking lot. I have a Cracker Barrel. I'm like, shoot, we got done with our food. I said, I'll be right back. Me and my daughter went and ran, tagged it. We got one in Tennessee because of that. So if you, if you want to do something like that... Um, Drop me a, a thing in the comments, and I will guarantee you I will make a video um, if I get a comment for it and show you the app and everything, uh, explain it, because it is a lot of fun to do with kids. Um, with kids, I was just doing the, the simpler ones. If you look at the videos on YouTube, I mean, there are ones, I remember, I remember watching this one, they are difficulty of one to five, five being the hardest, and fives are like a pain. I mean, way majorly pain. In Europe, they there was one, and the five is the guy goes into a storm drain. He, you know, he, he's walking up, and you're like, oh, wow, it's a nice wood area. That's not really a five. And then you see he's got to put on waders. He's got to go down the water, and he walks back in his pipe, this big pipe, like 12-foot pipe. And you're like, oh, okay. And he keeps going. And, he's, and then now there's nothing but his flashlight. His Both him and his friend have, like, the headlamps. And they're going deeper in this tunnel. And he says, oh, is, you know, I think he was Scottish or, or Irish or something. But he's, this is a good tunnel. He goes, not too many spiders. And then he just pans around, and he's got his camera, I guess, mounted on the helmet, too, his GoPro. And he he looks around, and there's spiders all over. And they are just coated. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> that's where I would have checked out. So he, he went a little further in, and he had it cut through some webs, I mean, like, Moved him aside with his hand and it found there's a Tupperware container and he signs and puts it. And I'm like, oh my god, no, 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 no. So, if you want my geocaching stories, 
put a comment down there. I'm going to see if I can make some videos uh, this weekend or this week. And I'll get, I, I tack these videos up. I mean, I know some of my patches. I'm going to show, I decided to show you a Star Trek uh, group shot. And if someone asks for it, I will do a geocaching one. Um, wow. I'm doing a lot of videos for him, doing videos. Anyway, I've rambled on so long. Oh my God, it's almost an hour. 40 minutes, I think. Yeah, my timer's up there. So, uh, I apologize. This is way too long a video for just the number of, of TDMs I had. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you stuck through it with me. I enjoy it, making them. If anybody's watching this far, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you've tuned out already, I understand. And I'll see you in the next video, and I will get those other videos up.